Now, we're looking at a very popular line drawing. This is Anthony's photographic bulletin of 1852, uh, 1872, and these are the backs of photographers' cards. And they were made because somebody in the 1870s in France has this wonderful statue. And if we turn it around, it's called the devil. And you notice he's standing on a spider wall. Mm -hmm. And if we look inside, you see the devil taking the picture. <laughs> now, I love photographic statuary. This is a beautiful pair of the photographer. It's called a Rogers group. It's the photographer and the sitters. It's a pair. This is the earliest known 1770 lost wax process statuary of a young man carrying a magic lantern. And what the lady has is a little music making box. And that's the earliest, basically, photographic theme in any statuary known. And all of it sits in the front of that room that you just saw. There it is from the other side. I do have a whole series for the gentlemen. I have a whole series of, of artistic studies. They're not news. They're artistic studies uh -huh. made in France. And, <clears throat> um, and we will now go on to looking underneath. And again, the daguerreotypes are ever present on the shelves. But underneath them, we're going to look at this particular daguerreotype camera there. This is the 1932 page out of a um, antiques magazine, September 1932. And it's called The Granddaddy of the Kodak. And it's this camera right here. And as we go along and we look at it, it gives you the whole documentation. It was designed by Dr. Draper in New York. And it was given to the man who was his neighbor. And uh, as a matter of fact, it came down the ship Sally on the Hudson River. I have all the documentation on this camera. And of course, the best thing is when you look at that, and then you realize, there it is. Hmm. Now, this is a quick summary from 1841. That's, that's 1840, the camera you just saw. So if that's 1840, America, mm -hmm. this is 1840, oops. 1841, 1842, 1843, 1844, 1847, 1851, 51, 51, 51, 53, and 55. So that gives you the development of the American daguerreotype camera. Now we're going to look on the walls. And on the walls we see one of my favorite pictures. In fact, I named it the Mona Lisa because it's a full plate daguerreotype done by Southworth and Hawker. Over here are items that are anything that has mother of pearl applique. This is a Perry viewer made in 1855, stereo viewer with full mother of pearl applique. And there it is in its spot where it sits. With the daguerreotypes of the gold rush here and here. And we're going to look, we've looked at this one. Let's look at that one. That one <coughs> is Nancy Niles Southworth Hodge. You saw her painting. This is a full plate daguerreotype made by her husband or her when they got married. And that's the same woman that you saw in the painting. Now let's look at this picture here. And as we look at it, we're going to see that chair, those three ladies reading, and in the chair behind them is this chair, mm. which again is in the attic. Four presidents sat in that chair to have their pictures. I don't sit in it because it's very, very unstable, but I love having it. These again are the gold rush images that are on the uh, shelves of right, right there as you come back and look back out of the room. Now you've just seen these three. There's another daguerreotype camera, right? Another stereo, that's a stereo daguerreotype camera. There's your gold rush. We're going to open up a few drawers over here. And there's over 300 gold rush images in these drawers concerning California in the 1840s and 50s. 
When I look at that drawer, there are pictures mm -hmm. like this. These are minors, one after the other. One after the other. I'll just show you a few of them, go through them very quickly to give you an idea of the variations. On the walls themselves are other special photographs. This is six Southworth and Haas full plates in an OG frame that you see on the wall right there. Let's look at that corner there. Let's see what we have. We have, well, looks like a camera. Let's turn this knob here and this knob here, and let's open it up. And we see that it is a 36-tube camera made by Robinson Company in Boston, Massachusetts in 1856. The only picture I ever saw of it, it's the only one known, the only picture I ever saw of it is in Peter Britt's Jacksonville, Oregon studio. It shows the same exact camera. Now, I don't know if that's Peter Britt's or not, but it sure is the same camera. Here it is next to the 16 tube. Now, there's about 10 of these known. So the 16 tube is here. This is the 36 tube. It made these little gem tin types. They're the size of a postage stamp. I don't have to hold it up. It's three quarters of an inch by an inch. Did you want to say something, Frank? I was thinking you wanted to know what one hour was on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> There's the 16 tube. There's looking through the back of it at a lantern. Now, let's take a look in this case, which we don't want to overlook. That's the other full plate, and all the rest of a mother of pearl of one kind or another. I think all told I have something like 30 some odd different mother of pearl cases. Now, <clears throat> we're over here and we're looking at some cameras on tripods in the other corner and we're going to look at that lens. Now that lens down there is pretty big because if you put it next to a normal lens, you realize that's a, that's a six plate lens over here. I don't know what that is. It's like a call it, compass. They call it the mother of all lenses. <laughs> now, if you people got another three minutes for me, yes. I'll yes. explain to you that this won't be the end. I'll take you into one other little thing. Fundraising through stereo cards. This will be the last section. Using the computer to scan 19th century stereo cards and putting together a story of then and now, I've raised tens of thousands of dollars with a paid presentation a small section of which will follow. This will show you what can be done with a computer and stereo cards. And every historical society in America has stereo cards. This is called Norwich, Connecticut, then and now. Time travel back in time to see the Norwich of the 1870s as it looked then and as it looks today. Now this is Little Plain Park and this is Huntington Place, which used to be called Huntington Avenue in the 1868 map. There are three open lots owned by W.S. Hempstead on Huntington Avenue. We are going to look at those three lots because in 1876, eight years later, they were three lots and now two houses. Let's take a look at that middle house, which is that one right there. The middle house is 28 Huntington Place, Norwich, Connecticut, 2005. And here it is now. The following photograph shows irrefutably that this was the first home built on this side of the street. You ready? Ready. You're not going to believe it. Oh my gosh. Then and now. We'll take you back to now. And we're going to show you a corner of a house. People of color were excluded from work in the mills in Norwich, Connecticut, but many survived by working as stable hands and servants to the more affluent whites. We're going to take you back to a time. Mr. Osgood, owner of the house. Mr. Osgood's stableman tethering the owner's favorite horse. Norwich was famous for its cast iron fences. It had very large foundries and made fence, cast iron fencing for all of New England. And we're going to take you back to today. Now, amazingly enough, let's step back and look at the whole house. 270 Broadway, Norwich, 1870. Let's look at 270 Broadway today. 
Let's take you again and show you these two enclosures, though they look original, the two porches were later enclosed as a Victorian addition in 1890. In 1890, they didn't want fresh air anymore, so they closed everything up. <laughs> you can see it. There's it was when it was built in 1860, and there it is in 1890. And let's come back slowly to today. The stableman, the owner, his horse, even the cast iron fence are long gone. But this magnificent home still stands as a tribute to the knowledge of yesterday. <laughs>